the second step in Go Deep Green, to reimagine our part in the human-Earth relationship. In step one, we told a bigger story for our species, and now we'll tell a better story for each of us. Here's a version of the story you might be living because you love the Earth and you wish you could save it. A lot of the stories in this unit are going to come from Margaret Wheatley, and here's the first. As change agents, activists, concerned citizens, caring human beings, we are attempting to change a global culture that has emerged. We speak out against corporate power, the deterioration of democracy, the loss of equity and opportunity, poverty, diseases, the annihilation of species and cultures. We work harder. We amplify the importance of our cause. We intensify our efforts. We know the world must change, it simply must. We renew our conviction that we will be the ones to change what has emerged. Well, we can't. I'll quote often during this unit from Margaret Wheatley and her book, So Far From Home, Lost and Found in Our Brave New World. We cannot change an emergent system. Why not? Wheatley says, emergence is a process whereby interactions create something new and different that cannot be changed. Once something has emerged, it's here to stay. So, <laughs> what can be done? <laughs> the only way to create something different is to start over, to begin again. And again, that's coming from Margaret Wheatley, and she's going to fill us in on how to do that starting over. That's our better story, starting over, on different terms. The terms of this better story are set by the phenomenon of emergence, and here is how Wheatley describes it. Emergence demands a different relationship with life where we're open, curious, alert. The only thing we can predict is that life will surprise us. We can't see what's coming until it arrives. And once something has emerged, we have to work with what is. We have to be flexible and willing to adapt. We can't keep pushing ahead, blustering on with our now outdated plans and dreams. We need to be present and willing to accept this new reality. We can't base our work or find our motivation from expecting to change this world. Don't worry about the feeling you may be experiencing of the floor falling out from under you. It is. We can't change the world. Our story has a new foundation, experimentation rather than expectation, participation, not problem solving. To enter the new story is to let go without giving up. And this is hard. It feels like giving up when we stop trying to push the rock uphill. Wheatley tells the story of Sisyphus. Sisyphus was condemned by the gods to an eternity of futile and hopeless labor. He had to roll a rock to the top of a mountain, only to watch it tumble back down from its own weight and the natural force of gravity. Then he would roll it to the top again forever. Sisyphus had no choice. He had been condemned by the gods, but we do have a choice. We can notice the price we're paying for our absurd heroism, for believing that it's up to us. So many people want to take at least partial responsibility for this mess. Somewhat piously, as if summoning us to accountability, they say, we need to accept responsibility that we created this. Or they say, we created it so we can change it. No, we didn't, and no, we can't. We participated with innumerable other players and causes, and this is what emerged. We can't take credit for it, we can't blame ourselves, and we can't put the burden of change on us. We are not Sisyphus, condemned to a fate of absurd heroism. If Sisyphus had been a free agent, he would have noticed that gravity was the problem. We have to notice that emergence is the problem, as unchallengeable a force as gravity. Let's fully face the brave new world that has emerged and put down our boulder, the energy-destroying belief that we can change the world. Let us walk away from that mountain of despair-inducing 
failures. It's challenging, but I think there's just this most beautiful little spark of hope in it. I think this is a better story. Here are a couple of ways to live into it. The first is from Margaret Wheatley, and this will round up the input from her. And as I said, the book, um, So Far From Home, Lost and Found in Our Brave New World, it's um, listed in the resource page. She writes about the people that she knows who are using emergence as their theory of change. They work from an emergent design rather than a strategic plan, meaning they have a clear intent, take the first actions, and then see what's needed next. Working this way requires a great deal of awareness, constantly curious to see how the larger system is interacting with our project and what other dynamics are in play, how people are reacting. If we're really good, we take in as much feedback as possible and use it to figure out what to do next. So there is something active and generative in this. It's just uh, takes a lot more openness and awareness and going step by step. That first way to live into this better story is to take an emergent design approach. The second way is to take an appreciative approach. Now, in the appreciative approach, it turns problem-solving habits on their head, and it shows that change or transformation is more powerful, energizing, and effective when we inquire into the true, the good, the better, and the possible. Everything that gives life to a system when it's most alive. What if the system in question is the planet, and specifically that part of the planet most meaningful and accessible to you? What gives life to that place when it's most alive? And how can you participate in that? Now, don't worry, the work is still going to have plenty of teeth to it. Creating the conditions for life to flourish will at times mean speaking truth to power, raising awareness of dangerous practices, and calling with your voice, with your body, for a stop to the destruction. But the sense of working with these systems rather than against makes all the difference to you and to your sense of hope and to your stamina. Here's what we've discussed in this video. To go deep green is to reimagine our part in the human-Earth relationship from problem-solving to participating, from strategic planning to emergent design. What has emerged cannot be changed, but something better can emerge. We're not like Sisyphus, bound to a hopeless task against unmovable forces. We can stop trying to change the world, and we can start working together to embody the values we treasure and to live into the world we wish to be in. We can trust that transformation is possible. There's a bit more to take in in this one, so please spend some time with the reflection questions and in the discussion with one another. I hope you find some ways to talk to each other about how to live into this better Earth story. And I'll see you in the next video.